Superman issue number five. We're back at it, folks. A Superman book for all ages. Most of them are. I don't know why I said it like that, but it's true. What a good book. It's so nice to have a good Superman book that is just really fun to read, and it's visually pleasing, and it makes me smile. Like, it's just nice. That doesn't happen often. We have a lot of good Superman books, but just one that I would just pick up and be like, hey, you're a person who is struggling to understand the Superman character. Read this book. That's what I do with this one. I think it's great. If you're still not reading it, I don't know what's wrong with you because it's just so fun and it looks cool. And if this is like the first spearhead of whatever the new initiative at DC feels like, it's something to be pretty proud of. It looks great. It's so much fun. Last issue, we learned that Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, well, he's having a little bit of a thing going on, Silver Banshee. We open up this book. And we see how the two of them met. So, once upon a time in Metropolis, Silver Banshee was just putting flyers up for her band, the Banshees of Metropolis. They Just sticking flyers on a post. She loses them through a gust of wind and Jimmy catches them. And he's like, I got them. Man, it's a bit old school to use flyers. And she's like, I like old school. And Jimmy's like, oh, well, what are your thoughts on bow ties? And it's like, oh, awesome i like jimmy when there's a good jimmy in a book it's great i really hope we nail him in the movies like we haven't had like a great iteration of jimmy in live action let's do it let's do it and they just fall in love and it's great and they hang out and she instantly's like so i was silver banshee and he's like you know i once turned into a giant turtle and also a monkey and a porcupine and I turn into a bunch of other stuff, and they move in together, and he's got all his action figures, and she just likes him. And then we open up to, like, the morning that we saw in the last issue, where she's like, hey, don't be later, Los is gonna be mad. So, he's getting up to get ready, and Dr. Farm comes in and takes her, and he's like, where'd you go? What just happened? And she's gone, and then we cut to the present day where Jimmy is confessing his love for Silver Banshee to the world, and she's like, you love me? And he's like, of course I do, Banshee baby. I love all of this. And even Lex just listening in is like, oh my god, of course Olsen would fall in love with a supervillain. What a goofball. And Superman's just like, dude, we gotta get her out of wave right now. She's a dangerous person right now, and her powers go off again. She doesn't want to use her powers, but of course, we know that she was infected by those supervillains, and they're manipulating her body. I love the way her powers are depicted in this book. It just looks so incredible. It's great. And we have to get her to safety so we can figure out what to do. And as her powers are doing damage to the situation around them, in comes Mercy and Super Corp. So they show up. They got jetpacks and a big gun. They got big guns that they can use against Silver Banshee because they got guns for everybody. And she's like, hey, we're ready to help, Superman. What do you want to do? And he's like, can I take the gun? And he takes the gun from Mercy and just crushes it. And he goes, why do you guys have guns for all my villains? It's annoying. It's stupid. Stop using guns. She's like, we have the most advanced research in the world. Don't destroy our shit. <laughs> I love it. But... She is freaking out because Saban's like, I don't want to hurt anybody, but I am going to hurt people. I, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I don't want to hurt you. So she tries to fly away and Superman's like, I got to get her safety to take care of her. But before he can fly off to follow Silver Banshee, Jimmy grabs onto his cape like, dude, listen to me. Let me come with you. I can talk her down of this. She's like, it's too dangerous. It's like, dude, what would you do to, to save the people you love? And that gets Superman to go like, uh, excuse me, Supercore, do you have a jetpack in my friend's size? And Jimmy gets a jetpack and they fly off into the sky to go encounter Silver Banshee. And it is fun. And it's adorable. And it's like, this is what you do with Jimmy Olsen. I know people might have, like, what they want to see happen, but, like, this is the fun stuff I want to see for that character. We don't get it enough anymore. Just Clark and Jimmy doing goofy stuff. Because they're goofballs in this book, and I adore it so much. So Silver Banshee attacks Superman, and Jimmy's like, Stop. Don't hurt him. And she's like, I never loved you, Jimmy. I just said I loved you, but I don't. I don't actually love you because... Dr. Farm said he'll hurt the people that I love, and if I say I love you, he's going to hurt you. He's like, babe, I know what I signed up for. I know what this is. And this is love. You know what? I'm here for it. And he just goes like, you laugh during sad movies. You don't just talk in your sleep. You sing. And it's so pleasant and nice, and it calms her down. And Superman's like, okay, 
we have a device that can help you get like the dis whatever's trapped inside your body out of you so i need you to scream as loud as you can and in a beautiful depiction we just see silver banshee kind of go crazy and superman brings the weapon in to disrupt the crazy stuff going on inside of her it's like a beautiful silhouette and it's just like the blacks and the whites going against each other it's so beautiful like it looks so great and cool and awesome oh it's so beautiful we also see something happen to superman's ear he can't hear perfectly and it looks like whatever was trapped inside of her is free and she runs into jimmy's arms and we cut back to super core where it's like well it looks like saban's doing fine we'll just keep an eye on her and it, just like parasite there was some different use of kryptonite on a glove that controlled her but it looks like everything's gonna be fine but superman's like this isn't good i'm getting real sick of everything going on here so he blasts down to old metropolis he's like Would you quit, quit playing games okay if you have issues with me take it up now and that's when, like, a projection of Dr. Harm and Graft show up. It's like, <laughs> we meet at last, kind of. But hey, this isn't about you. It's never been about you, Superman. It has to do with Luther, that piece of crap. Because you think you can save everyone. Everyone on this planet is worthy of redemption, including Lex Luthor, this guy that you think is worth saving. How well do you know Lex Luthor? Why don't you ask him about a certain project called Project Chained? It's like, what's Project Chained? Who's to say? It could be anything. But indeed, what is it? Or who is it? And then Dr. Farm leaves and Superman's like, okay. We also realize that his super hearing is gone because it's like nighttime later that day and he's out walking with Lois and... She's just like, y you lost your super hearing? How's that possible? It's like, well, I guess the big thing that Silver Banshee did where she used all her power messed up my eardrums, which is possible, but it just affected his eardrum. So for the next day or so, Superman is not going to be able to have his super hearing, which gives him time to like just relax and hear the sounds around him, which is really fun. It's beautiful. Also means he has time to focus on a couple of the s things happening in and around Metropolis that he's kind of been ignoring. Like Marilyn Moonlight, who's kind of like following him and her silhouettes like on a moon in the water. And wow, what a great design. I love her design so much. It's so silly. But it's fun. You know, and what Dr. Farm is saying about him trying to save Lex. He's like, well, I don't know if I should or if I can, but it makes me think that I, I have to try or at least learn what lies Luther is not telling me. Because there's clearly something he is avoiding in all of our conversations. I would like to figure out what those are. But they're headed to an event that has Lois freaked out. You know, like, what is? What could they be walking into that's got Lois all paranoid about what's actually going to happen? Who's to say? She's kind of nervous. It's date night, and they're going with Jimmy and Saban, so it's great. Look at that. She's going out with, she's going out with her husband and a guy that works for her that owns the building that she runs and his supervillain girlfriend. And it is adorable, and of course, Saban doesn't know anything about superman and lois's relationship so it's really fun she's like oh it's so great to meet you wow lois i've like read all the articles since i was a kid and you're like oh boy it's like sorry i'll talk to you guys after but i gotta go start we can totally hang out after because they are at the concert it's the banshees of metropolis and it's a rock concert and clark's like whoa i can actually hear them like normally i'd have to put like my headphones in to focus on anything but i can hear the music wow it's great she's good it's awesome and they have like a good time and you just see jimmy's just rocking out like my girlfriend's a rock star man it's awesome they do so much cool stuff with jimmy it's really fun and exciting this is great what, what a cute little moment big goofball clark and big goofball jimmy just hanging out with their ladies just having a great time meanwhile lex is like being transferred somewhere in like the the security prison he's a part of and He's like, you hear me, Superman. We won today, but the battle is not over. We still have much to do. I hope you can hear me. When Luther walks into like his new cell, there's like no guards. It's on the cafeteria. And a couple of guys in the prison straight up stab him. And he's screaming out like, Superman, Superman, save me, please. And Lex is seemingly going to die. And... 
we know Clark can't hear because he doesn't have a super hearing and he's just having fun with Jimmy and Lois and Saban and it's like, whoa, what a terrifying way to end this issue. I can't wait to next month to see what's going to happen. Oh, wait, Night Terrors. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> In August and September, so we're off for a month now, folks. Oh, my God. I still don't know how much of Night Terrors I want to cover. I don't know if I want to touch it at all. It sounds intense, but we'll see. So there you go. That's where Superman ends. He can't hear Lex crying out for his help. And it's kind of sad and terrifying and might re-solidify Lex's, like, stance on everything that Superman is, where he won't even try to save him, which is kind of like what the theme of this book has been. Clark's trying to save Lex, and maybe he should. And even Lex admits, like, in this, like, maybe it would have been simpler if we teamed up when we were in Smallville together. Interesting stuff. I love it a lot. What a fun book. Great artwork again, Jamal Campbell, crushing it at every turn. So much fun. Such a unique story. I love it so much. So, Superman issue number five. I am going to give a nine out of ten. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.